Hi everybody, I'm Phoenix and today I'm going to be talking about love. What is it? No idea exactly what I'm going to say or where I'm going. I haven't even chosen a direction. I've just chosen that question. What is love? And it's probably a question I'm sure, no doubt it's a question that many philosophers over time have tried to determine and it's more so about them filling their void or getting something from it that makes them feel good about themselves. And I think some people are like that. That Younger girls, younger people in general, even guys, they'll go with a girl just for the ego kicks. Just because it makes them feel better about themselves. Or it fits some kind of ideal image of who they should be with so that they can show their friends and their family and get a thumbs up and nod of approval. That's not love. You know, but what is love? You know, yes, it's a desire to integrate, but what about the reason that we wish to integrate? Do I want to integrate with you so that we can produce children? Do I love you because you can provide me children? Or do I want to integrate with you so that we can have sex, great sex, and it feels so good for me? You know what I mean? And it makes me feel good on a mental level, on an egotistical level. When I can make you feel good too. That charges my self-esteem, knowing I can pleasure. Is that love? If that's my motivation, my desire, the basis for my desire to integrate? Or what if it's to become more disciplined or more motivated? What if I, you know, when I'm with you, that's how you make me feel? What if that's the basis for my desire to integrate, to spend time with you? Because it keeps me moving doing things they need to do. Is that love? So it, it gets trickier when you start digging deeper through the layers. Yes, there's a basic desire to integrate, to get close and be with someone and interact and synthesize. But really, I think what motivates the desire is the produce of the synthesis. It's what comes out of the interaction. And that's what motivates the desire to come back for more. You know, you, you, it's Saturday night, all right? And you've got multiple options on the board of what you can do. On the one hand, let's say you've got some friends who, you know, they, 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 they're good people. Really good people. You've known them since high school. They're like your old-time besties, right? And whenever you're with them, it's always very interesting. Lots of laughter. And they're cool, you know. But they live in a, in a very boring house void of entertainment, really uncomfortable sofas, no sofas, they're just on the floor, don't ask me why your old time besties are, are, are living in some dilapidated place, but all of a sudden, it's become a dilapidated place with no couches, alright, and then on the other hand, you've got another place, you know, maybe there's like a, a house party, or let's turn it down a bit, maybe there's some acquaintances and some okay friends that you've known for a year or so on and off that you get along with as well and you enjoy being with but it's not like your besties they're not like fire and excitement as such but um you know and there is somewhere where it's like a, a three-story place full of entertainment luxurious food comfortable sofas fireplace and it's winter all right who, who are you going to go to hang out with? Let's say there's you two options. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? How are you going to spend your Saturday night? You could be with the people you love for who they are, even though they lack a lot of the comforts and the luxuries. Or you can go for someone who's okay, not as good company, but they're okay. But they've got a whole lot of luxury and comfort. You know, And maybe they live a bit closer too, and they live a little bit further. Who will you go to? And the point is... That when we make our decisions with regards to who we're going to hang out with, who we keep in touch with and contact regularly, who we make the energy and the investment to actually go out and visit and catch up with or invite over and make preparations for. You know, a lot of the time we think, oh, I'm doing this because I like this person. You know, I'm doing that because that's Fred and Fred's awesome. And that works on a surface level, but if you dig deeper, generally there's a lot of different reasons and different motivations, a lot of different factors that, that come into play. And really, it's all those different factors that work together to make your overall 
the overall perception of how valuable this is. You know, is the person, does the person live closer? Do they have more things on offer which can make me happier or make life easier for me? And do I enjoy their company? You know, company's one thing. Being a good person, being interesting, being able to keep someone entertained and intrigued and just being able to make them happy, you know, and comfortable in your presence and bring out their better colors is definitely part of it. But it's not the end all. And this is why a lot of nice guys be pining because the love of their life doesn't hold them in that light. And they never do. And they keep going for maybe assholes or men that the person thinks they're so much better than. You know, why do they keep going for these idiots and douchebags? Maybe those douchebags are offering something that you're not. And maybe that makes the difference. As much as you are an awesome person and maybe...